Hey, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo from Excel Moments and it's been a moment. This video is really a continuation of one I already created on how to create um, meeting invites, you know, in Outlook from Excel by taking advantage of what Visual Basic for application. So I got some follow up comments and questions. Someone was like, how can you extend this, you know, to multiple invites? Another person had, you know, an actual use case for it. Person is a recruiter. And, uh, for example, you scheduled interviews for a number of people. You want to send out the invites to all of them, but you want to do that with a click of a single button. Because the invites are pretty much the same. The only thing that would change, of course, would be the name of the people, you know, the time their interview is scheduled, maybe how long, who should attend, who shouldn't attend. So what I have is I've set up this table, which is really where we're going to be picking data from. And we're going to see how to create multiple invites, you know, at once and sent to, um, you know, different recipients. Okay. So if this data expands and more rows are included, you just run the macro and it would um, adjust accordingly. Okay. So let's get into VBA and start. Uh, the first thing is we're going to create a module. Typically, you could do insert and then module. I always do I, I or I am rather. Um, it's just my way of doing it, but it's the same thing, really. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a reference to the Outlook object so just so that I can take advantage of IntelliSense. So I'm going to do tools. I'm going to do references. Okay, you can see there's already one to the office object, but I need one to the Outlook object. So you go down, you would see uh, Microsoft Outlook. I thought I saw it. Yes, here. Okay, so the 16.0 is dependent on the version of Excel you have installed, right? You may see 15 or 14. You have some of the older versions. Okay, so let's give our macro a name. Let's say sub uh, send uh, invite to multiple. Let's just call it that so it's not too long. Okay, so I'm going to create a few variables and then I'll get started. Uh, first one I'll do is I'll create one for the Outlook application. And I'll say dot, you know, as uh, Outlook dot application. Okay. I can create another one for the meeting in itself. So Outmeet, that's what I want to call that. And I would say Outlook dot appointment item. Okay. So it's an appointment item and a meeting item are essentially the same, but you don't see, you know, a meeting item when you set this up. I'll show you one of the properties, you know, of the appointment item object, which you can then use to switch it from being an appointment to, um, you know, a meeting. Okay. I know I'm going to look from row to row, you know, to make this happen. So I'm going to create a variable for that. I could just call that I as long. And then I may need to know, you know, the sheet I would be working on. I want to reference that. So I could call that, in my own case, setup sheet as, a, you know, worksheet. Okay. So what I can do now is, first of all, maybe assign, you know, those objects to, you know, what they really belong to. Because in this sense, I've only created, you know, uh, some uh, space in memory for them, but I haven't actually assigned them. So let's see. The name of my sheet is setup sheet. Okay, so I can go back here and say set setup sheet to be equals to worksheets, you know, setup. Okay, so that's it primarily. All right, so next thing I'm going to do is just to get into the loop, right? I know I'm going to be looping from row two. Why? Because row one has headers onto the last um, non blank row. So I, I need something like this. I just say for i equals to two, meaning start at two. Where are we going to end? I can do range a and rows dot count. What am I trying to do? I want to get the last, uh, you know, non blank row. So I go to the very bottom of column a and I press control up. If you do that, it gets you to the last you know, um, non-blank row. Someone else could say, okay, I'll start from the top and press control down. That would also work, you know, only when you don't have blanks because if you have blanks in between, control down doesn't get you to the last, you know, non-blank row, okay? So I'll do this. I go to the very bottom. This is like going to A1048576, last row in column A. Then I come up, which is like end Excel up. That's like saying pressing control up. And then whatever row I land on, that's the last used row okay and then i do next i all right so 
this is going to go from row two all the way that way. So inside here, I'm now going to um, assign, um, you know, um, what's it called? Um, some objects to the um, objects I've created, you know, a space for in memory. So I'm going to use, first of all, I'm going to say set, you know, the Alt app, which is the Outlook application to be goes to Outlook, you know, that application. I'm going to say set out meet to be equals to what in this case out app which is now the application itself dot what i will create an item there i'll create an item i call it what well, let's see an appointment item is the intelligence that really made me add that reference so that i don't have to think so much about some of these things i can just pull them from memory okay so what i've done here is this is the outlook application itself then this is the appointment you know um, object and what we are doing here is that we are creating an item which is an appointment item within out app which is the application okay so you create the appointment item within outlook outlook here i have designated it to be out app okay so now this is the appointment item and the appointment item has a lot of properties okay like who you are sending it to the subject what time is starting you know the duration things like that so i know i'm going to change a couple of properties so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the width block so i'll say width out meet so that i can change a couple of them then i'll say end width okay so within here i will then be setting up you know the different things i need so first thing for you know an appointment or a meeting invite was one of the important things you will need to have. Of course, you need to have a subject, okay? So if you do dot, you will see that you have a subject, you know, property. So what's the subject property? We could then say what subject we want for this. We could say invitation, you know, to an interview, okay? So invitation to an interview. I think that's good enough. What else do we need? We can put in here those who are required to attend. You know, so that's called the required attendees. Now, let's see what column that is in my data. I press Alt Q to go back. Required are E and optional are F. Okay, so let's come back Alt F11. So, required are E. So, I can say set up sheets, which is, you know, my sheets there. I can do cells. I can do range, whichever, whichever one I want. I can say range, you know, E. And whatever row I'm on, the row I'm on is I now currently because, you know, I'm using I to loop from row to row. So if I'm starting with I equals to 2, it means I'm on row 2. So in this case, I'm referring to E2. OK, so I can say this dot value. So whatever is in, you know, cell E2, you know, that's what would be in the required attendees field. Now, the next thing is also the optional attendees. Essentially the same. I'm just going to pick this one and I'm going to set this here. But I will change this to F. Okay. So that's one other thing I can include. Then what else? It's important to know when we are starting, right? The start time. Okay. So start. I just need to know what column that is. My start time is in column C, as you can see. So I come back and I do kind of the same thing. But this time I'll say, say, all right. Now the next thing is the duration. How long is this going to last? Duration. Duration, I think, is in the next column. Yeah, D. Okay. So um, I'm just going to do the same thing and I'm going to change this to D. Now you should know that the duration is normally in minutes. Okay. So if you set it up in hours, then you have to find a way to convert it to minutes, either by maybe doing whatever you have there in hours multiplied by 60 here. You know, but the duration, what Excel sees here is duration you know in minutes okay so now you could also include something like importance you know how important is this you know when you receive some in meeting invites you see high importance okay so when you do that you can see high importance low normal but let's say this is very urgent so we say you know um importance is high what else do we need to include here um the body i think it's a very important one. So what do we want to put in the body? We may want to state something, you know, hello, this and this, you're invited to. So let's just create something simple. So just say hello, okay? And then maybe we'll now add this to the name of the person. So like say hello, first name, all right? So where's our first name? Our first name is in column A, okay? So I can say hello, you know? So in this case, this is like saying hello, who is on row two, Victor. Yeah, so this is just going to be hello, Victor. Okay. Uh, so then maybe I put a comma, right? 
just following the thought process. So after doing hello, Victor, then you may want to add, you know, um, an empty line, first of all, before you type what you want to do. So you can do VBLF, which is like saying a new line, but this would not leave. This is just like saying pressing enter, but you want to press enter, enter. So you could say VBLF, VBLF, right? So this is going to create, you know, like a blank line between the hello, Victor, and then you could just say, and um, maybe I should put it on the next line. Okay, so I just say, well, you are invited, you know, for an interview as scheduled above. Okay, then after this, I could add, you know, just one line and I can say maybe regards admin, something like this. Okay, so that's the body. That's essentially what you're going to see in the body of the meme. All right, so after that, what do we then need? We would need, uh, da, 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 da. let me see. Okay, location. Sometimes we put this here. So the location, let's assume this is a, a meeting of Microsoft Teams. I will just put Microsoft Teams here. I'll just do this. That's what I will do for now. Um, then the last one I would want to include is what I mentioned at the beginning how you switch it from, you know, being an appointment to a meeting. That's essentially the meeting status property. So when you do dot, you know, meeting status, you know, you would see, right? So you can now see meeting, meeting canceled, meeting. So once you change this to meeting, this switches it from being an appointment to being a meeting. Okay, so that's that. The next thing here, because I don't want to send, you know, these emails, I will just do here dot display. But normally, if you want to send it, you should do dot send. Okay, so you see that. But I will do dot display in this case, just so that maybe all of them would pop up. At least we can see that uh, that's what I want to do. Um, is there another thing I may want to include? Yeah, I could decide to include, you know, like... Um, a reminder, this is one thing that is good. Sometimes you have a meeting for 2.30 and you can set a reminder so that it gives you, you know, a prompt at uh, 15 minutes to that time. So I could do dot reminder, yes, reminder minutes before start, okay? So I could say 15, right? So this means that 15 minutes before the start time, it's going to uh, pop up to tell me that you have a meeting in 15 minutes. And I think that's good. So everything looks good except I'm missing something. So typically, I would always do debug and compile. Okay, one of my lucky days, everything seems to be fine. So what this is going to do is it's going to go from row two, you know, it's going to perform all of this. Um, then it's then going to go to row three, row four, and so on. So what I like to do is also release the variables when I'm done. So since I've assigned, you know, those variables to the Outlook application when I'm done here, although I, I like I said, some of these, I'm, I'm just be doing it for demonstration purposes. I could do this release outside of you know um you know the loop i could say i could even assign outside of the loop you know rather than every time i i loop through you know i assign so i can i can do some of these things outside of the loop yeah but i was just working with the mindset of if i was setting it up for one recipient so i could say set out up to nothing you know set out meet to nothing Right. I could also move the first ones outside of the loop so that I'm not assigning every time it iterates. Okay. So this is just to make sure that okay, whatever variables I have, you know, stored in memory at the end of the run, you know, it's going to release them. All right. So let's now try to run this. So if we run, we expect you know a few meeting invites to pop up, about uh, five of them. Yeah. All right. So let's click play and see. Okay, all right, so they are all popping up. Aha, uh -huh. so you can see, um, so invitation to an interview, you can see who is required, who is optional, you can see the email, right? So you can see this one is hello, Grace. Uh, you see the one behind is hello, James, uh, hello, Najim, you know, hello, Johnson. So with just um, a click of a single button, in this case, well, the play button, you know, we are able to send out all these multiple invites at once to multiple recipients, you know, customizing the uh, the body. We can also customize some other things. You know, even this body of this email, I could have had it as a cell, you know, in Excel. I could, I could have created something here, you know, by concatenating stuff together. I could also have the subjects here, you know, and say, pick the subject from the worksheet, pick the uh, body from the worksheet. 
you know, and stuff like that. So these things are, you know, really flexible, but just to show you how to set it up. So once you have this set up this way, uh, you can then include some other things or, you know, move things around. But this in its basic form is what you need to get this working. Okay, so I hope this gives you a good idea, you know, of how to send, you know, Outlook invites to multiple recipients and, you know, have uh, different things customized. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel Excel Moments. I would appreciate your comments and your feedback in the comment section. But for now, I'm out.